TypeScript also has a concept of interfaces, which let you define a template for an object and have multiple objects fit into that template if it matches the criteria. So we looked at creating classes for a person. What I could do is create an interface for a person. And the way to do this is by defining the keyword interface followed by the name of the interface. The convention is again to use uh, the uh, first letter as uppercase, just like classes. And uh, here I can define the properties with types, just like you do with classes, right? So I have last name. Uh, the only difference comes with methods. You don't really create method implementations with interfaces. You just create the signature of the method and then have classes implemented. So for instance, we have a get full name uh, method in a person class. Now I can define uh, a signature for the method get full name, but I cannot really define the the method content itself. That has to be implemented by a class which is extending this interface. So get full name can be a function that takes in no input arguments and then it returns a string. So here what I'm doing is I'm just defining the, the method and not providing the implementation. Now here I can have a class this could be anything, uh, implements person. And now since this implements person, this has to have these members in the class. So here you see there is an error and Visual Studio Code provides me with autocomplete. It says implement the interface person. And if I click that, see here you get all the contents of that interface provided as implementation. So you have first name and last name as two properties, which are strings, they have to match. And then you have a method implementation over here, which by default throws an error, but I could return the start first name, the start last name. And now I have an implementation of this method, right? So this is how interfaces work. Interfaces let you define the structure without defining the implementation. And then the class that implements the interface has to provide everything that the interface is declaring, right? So the declaration goes over here uh, that you want to enforce every class that implements it to actually follow and implement as well. All right, so interfaces are fairly simple, but I want to introduce a concept of duct typing, which is pretty important in uh, TypeScript. Now we have the person interface, and then you've created a class called foo, and thanks to polymorphism, this shouldn't come as a surprise if I were to say, let a person which is declared as the interface type equals new foo. This will work because foo implements the interface. So an instance of the class foo can be allocated to a variable that's declared of that interface. Simple enough, right? Now here's where things get a little bit different with TypeScript. TypeScript doesn't really enforce this entirely. You can create an object that has all the properties of this interface, even though the object is not an instance of a class that implements that interface. Let's say I create an object. Uh, let some obj equals, I'm mean, just gonna create an inline object, right? It's not an instance of a class, just a random inline object. I'm going to create first name, last name, and then I'm gonna create a get get full name be a method that returns test as well, All right? So this is a simple object, which is not an instance of the class foo. It is not an instance of any class that implements the person interface, but it is very similar to an object that would have been an instance of or would have been an instance of a class that implements the person interface, right? It looks very similar. It has the same properties. It has the same method, the same signature. So here's what TypeScript does. TypeScript allows you to treat this as an instance of person. It really doesn't matter if it's strictly implementing a class or strictly implementing an interface. As long as it matches the structure, it is fine. So for instance, I can say a person which we know is in is declared of type person, 
can be assigned the value of some object. And this is fine. Why is this fine? This is because this has the same structure. This kind of structure-based typing is what's referred to as duck typing. The name comes from the phrase, if it looks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, then it is a duck. So it's basically what TypeScript looks at. It sees an object, and if it looks like the object that is being assigned to, if it has the same properties, it has the same behavior, well, that's good enough for TypeScript, right? This is an important thing to remember when you're dealing with objects that are not necessarily strictly created as instances of a class or instances of an implementation of interfaces. As long as the properties match exactly, it's gonna work fine. Now, what do I mean by the properties matching? So here, there are a couple of nuances to it. First, if a required property doesn't exist, then this is gonna fail, all right? So let's say I remove last name. Now, TypeScript complains because it expects last name to be available, but it is not available, right? And the property last name is missing. So the required properties have to be there. But here's where things get interesting. If I were to add an extra property, right? Let's say I have a foo, this 10, random property, which is not a part of the person interface, this works fine. See, TypeScript is not giving me an error. The problem though is I cannot access foo from a person. A person dot foo is gonna give an error. This is because foo does not exist on person. So this is the default behavior of the TypeScript compiler. It requires that structure to match, but it doesn't really have to be a strict instance of classes or interfaces. Something for you to remember when you're dealing with external objects that may not necessarily be instances of classes directly, but they have the same property and the same structure that should work fine.